This lecture is titled The Mitochondria. And what we're going to do is talk a little bit about metabolic flexibility and how that ties into what I just spoke about, which is the care and feeding of the mitochondria. So like, why are we so obsessed with this? Why do we care about the mitochondria? Zach told you earlier there were little organelles, right, in your cells, which we'll get into in a second. But we're seeing all kinds of science come out now with all these different chronic diseases associated with the problem that Zach outlined earlier. And what we're seeing is there's a strong correlation with metabolic dysfunction and also dysfunctional mitochondria. And so if we take it back to that model of metabolic flexibility, there's the definition. The ability to switch back and forth between carbs and fat as a fuel source in response to metabolic demands. And what we're saying is that if you are metabolically flexible, that's going to lead to healthy mitochondria. And I'll just put mito as a as shorthand. So the job of the mitochondria is to take these substrates, right, these things that we're eating, and then turn it into energy. Now these, Michelle outlined that some of the stuff we, that we eat turns into the structure. Like everything that you can touch and feel on your body, every structure is made up of something that you ate. Right? So that's part of the reason we eat. The other reason is to create energy. Without energy, without ATP, there's no existence. We're just dead bodies. Okay? So carbohydrates and fat and protein if they're going to be used for energy, they get converted into something called acetyl-CoA. Inside the mitochondria. Think of them as logs on a fire. Think of acetyl-CoA as the logs on the, on the fire that's creating the energy. Right? The energy in the fire is the ATP. How they get to convert into acetyl-CoA is different. It's always different. Okay, so we'll talk about each of these individually. So carbohydrates, what was the simple version of the carbohydrate that Michelle outlined to you guys gets used by, by the body primarily? Do you remember? Yeah, glu yeah, glucose, right? Glucose. So we can get carbohydrates from food or like Tim said, glycogen as well. Glycogen is carbohydrate that's stored in the muscle and the liver and that gets converted into glucose. Even, even galactose and fructose get converted into glucose before the body gets to use it for energy, for the most part in the liver, okay? Before glucose gets converted into acetyl-CoA, it goes through a process called glycolysis. You guys familiar with that, right? Glycolysis. Glycolysis is, is an anaerobic energy system, right? And when you guys were feeling your legs burning on the bike, that's your body using glycolysis to create some energy. Okay, so it goes through glycolysis as a first step. Gets converted into pyruvate. And then pyruvate goes through a process called pyruvate oxidation to get converted into acetyl-CoA. Once it's acetyl-CoA, the mitochondria can turn it into ATP. Okay? One of the byproducts of this conversion is what you guys felt in your legs. Right? You actually didn't feel the lactate. You felt one of the other byproducts, which is a hydrogen ion that creates acidity. Right? So it's actually the hydrogen ion that creates the acidity. And your body actually can use lactate as an energy source. So it can get converted back to pyruvate and then go in and use for energy and the, or the liver can convert that directly into glucose. So there's all kinds of stuff that's going on here that I'm not going to draw on the board because it's not 100% necessary, but it's kind of fun to know that that can be used for energy, right? Okay, great. That's your main route that carbohydrates are going to take to get to the mitochondria, okay? Now protein. Protein, what's the basic building block of protein? Do you guys remember? That's right, amino acids. So amino acids, we use those as an energy source primarily. Not really, right? They're used for structure mostly. They can be used for energy. 
right? If you were gonna lower your carbohydrate intake drastically, like follow a keto diet, and if you were gonna, or if you're doing carnivore and you're gonna increase your protein intake quite a bit, your body might use some of that protein as energy. It's actually gonna convert that into glucose first, okay, before it gets through the same pathway into the mitochondria. So that process is called gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis is just another way of saying, turning anything that's not sugar into sugar. So you can turn like fat into sugar, one of the glycerol heads of a triglyceride, you can turn an amino acid into sugar, you can turn lactate into sugar, it's all gluconeogenesis, okay? Fat. So fat, what's the basic building block of the fat that Michelle told you guys? Yeah, triglycerides, and then those, so a triglyceride is made of a glycerol head, tri, three, fatty acids. Okay, so it's like, think of it, it looks like, a, if you were to, I was to draw it on here, it looks like a jellyfish with three tentacles. Okay, and the, the, the little tentacles are the fatty acids. And the fatty acids are the thing that our body primarily uses for fuel. So, I'm gonna write down fatty acids. And fatty acids can get converted directly into acetyl-CoA by a process called beta-oxidation. Have you guys ever heard of that before, beta-oxidation? Beta-oxidation, great. There's another way that the body can use fat as fuel. And you guys might have heard of it before. Ketones, right? So the liver can convert fatty acids into ketones And once you have those ketones, they're almost like pre-cut logs. So think of beta oxidation as a little bit of a longer, more cumbersome process to convert fatty acids directly into acetyl-CoA. Ketones require less work by the body, less enzymes to take that energy, convert it into acetyl-CoA. They're like pre-cut logs, just sitting out, right, waiting outside, you got your stack of logs. Instead of having to cut the whole tree down, you got, you got them all ready to go, just throw them up on the fire. That's like a ketone, okay? So for the most part, right, this is what's going on in the body in terms of how we're taking the food that we eat and converting that into energy through the mitochondria. Now the mitochondria is responsible solely for a specific type of metabolism. It's called aerobic metabolism. Aerobic metabolism means in the presence of oxygen. So it's using oxygen with these substrates to create ATP. So you've got O2 going in, you've got carbon dioxide going out along with water as a byproduct. Okay. This process is called cellular respiration. Okay, so in the presence of oxygen. You guys right now are using some of these substrates with every breath that you take. And your mitochondria are taking that oxygen. When you breathe out, the CO2 comes out as a byproduct. Okay? So, in the presence of oxygen. Now, I told you that when you get that feeling in your legs, your body's using glycolysis as one of those energy systems. So we've got two main energy systems that we're gonna call anaerobic. So I'll put that over here, an aerobic, meaning without the presence of oxygen. The first one is glycolysis. So during this process of converting glucose to pyruvate, one of the byproducts is ATP. It's a necessary first step to get glucose converted into acetyl-CoA. So every single time your body uses glucose, even down here in the presence of oxygen, it has to bypass through glycolysis first. So you're always, when you're breaking down carbohydrate, getting a small amount of anaerobic metabolism 
as a precursor to the aerobic metabolism. You guys understand that? That's not the same case for fats. It's not the same case. Okay, we'll come back to that later. The other anaerobic energy source that we, we have is the phosphocreatine pathway. Phosphocreatine pathway. Phosphocreatine plus ADP. Right, so PCR, just phosphocreatine. What's ADP again? Adenosine diphosphate. Adenosine diphosphate. What's it missing? It's missing a phosphate group. What does the phosphocreatine have? It has that phosphate group. So it's going to get converted into creatine plus ATP. And this, is, this cycle is just going on and on and on. Okay? When you take creatine as a supplement, you're just feeding the system. Right? You're feeding the system, and with enough phosphate groups, it just gets looped into this cycle to create energy. So of these three energy sources, right, if we call it, we're going to separate it right about here. Right? Those are the anaerobic energy pathways, and this is the aerobic energy pathways. If we got acetyl-CoA as like the logs on the fire, it's like that slow burning fuel source. Glycolysis is, is like the kindling on the fire. Burns a little bit faster. You can get a more intense flame a little bit quicker. And then the phosphocreatine pathway is like the gasoline. Right? You want like instant flame, throw the gas on the fire. Right? Your body uses all of this all at once, all the time. And depending on the body's energy needs, in that particular moment, and the fuel coming in through your mouth, it's going to choose to use a little bit more of a different engine over another one. Right? So I've drawn it in a way that's easy to comprehend, and it looks like roads on a highway, but it's not how it actually works in reality. In this cell, it's just like a bowl of jelly. It's a bowl of soup. Right? And the body is just going to use whatever the hell is in the soup at the time. It's all mixed up, jumbled up in there, right? So all of this happens in an effort to maintain something called homeostasis. Which just means internal balance. Right? The body's always trying to maintain homeostasis. It's not trying to maintain balance. And how it does that is in response to the body's energy needs. It has two questions to ask itself. One, what fuel is available? And then two, What is my mitochondrial capacity? Because what energy pathway the body chooses is highly dependent on this furnace right here. The health of the mitochondria. It's got two options. It can make a bunch of ATP out here in the cytoplasm or it can go through the mitochondria. If you have more mitochondria, more healthy mitochondria, it's going to use them. It's going to use those mitochondria. It's going to use the aerobic energy system. If you have fewer or less healthy or both mitochondria, it's not going to use them. Okay? That's highly dependent on what foods you guys are eating.